Hello there, it's Sandy Allnock, and I'm back with the second of my Scratchboard stamping videos. And this time I'm going to use the Artist Scratchboard to do it. As I said in the last video, I had just barely started on this one when I was shooting and processing that one. So I, I knew enough that this is a much finer surface to work on and that sort of thing. But I continued working on it just a little at a time over, I guess, a couple weeks here to get it all finished. But this definitely has a nicer surface to it than my DIY. The DIY one has, you know, the thickness of the neo color that I put down and then the thickness of the paint and it just kind of came off in chunks in places so it didn't have the delicacy that this does. This has a very thin coating of ink and possibly if I used ink on the other scratch board thing maybe that would have worked better. I don't really know. I haven't tried it and if you want to try it you're welcome to do that as well. Just make yourself a small sample of different papers and putting different color and different inks and stuff on them. But the, the surface of this is just much nicer and I'm getting a really nice fine line with the tool and scratching it is working so much better than it did on my DIY. So there's another vote for professional artist materials from my camp. And when you're doing scratch board, you need to think in reverse because the places where you're going to put more of your little scratch marks are the highlights. And with this tool, you know, I can press harder and kind of scrape all the black off in the super highlights. And then as I get down to the sides of the flowers or the leaves, just lighten the pressure and I start to get a really thin line. I can really even feather it out. And that's one of the things I'm practicing on these small ones because the lady whose video I watched and I was so blown away by, and I, it just made me want to try this. She does these like really huge pieces and then she gets all this detail in them. She does animals and you know me, I love to do animals and I'd like to do, you know, to try some of that too. And she also adds ink to it. She adds color and she has a whole video on how she adds color. I will link you to that in the description so you can go see and follow her and her beautiful work. But what I decided to do was just dive in here and try it. I didn't bother to do a lot of research about what I was doing. I just decided to jump in and do it. So I began with these flowers and filled the whole thing with flowers from the stamp set and just added a bunch of leaves in between. And I kept kind of turning the stamp set and stamping other flowers around the outside edge to continue the pattern. But then I decided I'm going to get out my inks because I have a ton of fountain pen inks. So why not? Let me try these and began to paint with my uh, pink glitz, I think is the name of this color. And I watered it down because I was a little nervous. I didn't know if it was going to go on too heavy or exactly what was going to happen. So I was trying to put in some of this pink color and I wasn't sure how it was supposed to look because it was kind of puddly and wasn't going on evenly. Then I was thinking maybe do I need more ink? And occasionally I would reach for my bottle and I would add more direct from the bottle and just kept going back and forth. Now I will tell you at the end I was planning on doing what the other artist did in her project which is to go back in after putting the color in and scratch off more of the white highlights. For hers that gives her all these layers in the fur and you know me in layers. I was like, oh, that's going to be great. I will add some, some white highlights onto some of the leaves and some of the flowers after I get all this painting done of all this color. Well, these inks don't scratch off. So I'm going to have to go back and research and find out what inks she uses and what kind of surface this thing actually is. I don't even know what it is. I don't understand enough about it to have any idea what's going to scratch off and that sort of thing. So I just proceeded from my gut trying things. This is one of the things that I constantly am recommending to all of you is to just try something. If you think it might work, you never know. And what happens if it doesn't work well? You know, it's another piece of paper. 
it's another little little artboard that goes away if it doesn't work. And this came out really beautiful in the end anyway, but I was experimenting. I was playing to see if the things I already had at home would work. The DIY one, I had most of that stuff already at home anyway, and just used the things that were in my studio to make a DIY scratch board. And with something like this, all I had to buy was these little five by fives. Now I'll tell you, I have bought some bigger ones, some eight by tens. And that's my next thing to try to start to practice with better tools. Because as I mentioned also in the last video, these scraping tools are not comfortable. They feel really cheap in my hand. And I'm very used to like just nice art tools. And these have you know, like the, the way that they make a plastic molded body on something, and then it has a seam, a really sharp seam. That's kind of what these things have. And there's got to be good tools out there. So I'm going to go do some more research. I'm going to go find some good tools. If I find them by the time this video posts, I will link them to the stuff that I'm planning on getting. Don't know if I'll have gotten them yet or not, but I will also write up anything on the blog post if I have any more thoughts after. Uh, getting this whole video done. I do tend to update things on the blog that maybe didn't fit into the video or things that I forgot to say or something. So sometimes if you have questions, those are actually answered on the blog. Now, one of the things you're going to see here very shortly is that I forgot to paint a couple of my flowers. There's a couple little buds that just didn't get painted in the pink, they got painted over with the green. And then I was like, okay, now what do I do? You know, not knowing whether or not one color would force the other color out or would it cover it? And should I just pretend that there's no flowers there? And I decided to just throw the pink in and see what happened. And yes, they remained pink. So that was at least good. They were a darker pink than everything else, but then I took my baby wipe and moved a little color off. I was bummed that I didn't get to go back in and add some really white highlights, but this thing came out so beautiful anyway that I'm still adding it to my store on my fine art site because I still think it's gorgeous, even if it didn't come out with the white highlights that I was hoping for. I do plan to do some more scratch board, as I said, so stay tuned for more in the future because I'm excited to see what I can do in this particular medium. It seems really, really good for fur. So I'm gonna do, go back to doing some wildlife art in the near future. All right, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And go check out the blog if you want more information and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.